morning everybody welcome back to my channel I'm Nina and this is Danina Farms so this morning I thought I would get up a little bit early everybody decided to sleep in late this morning um, so while it's quiet I thought I would bring you guys outside and uh, give you a garden tour but first um, I'm gonna go get a few farm chores done and I'll take you along with me Esther and Xerxes. They are hanging out in here together. We're hoping we're gonna have a breeding and some piglets come November. So now we're going up to the feeders. There's one of our Greek Pyrenees over there. Hey buddy, I'll be back in a minute to feed you. Here's our feeder pen. These are American guinea hogs. Hi guys. So in here we have ages. Um, that one right there is over two. She should have gone to the processor and go. Um, she's gonna go probably next month. Then we have some one-year-olds in here, and we have the little bitty ones are about four months old. As you can tell, most of our pastures are all dirt. It is late summer here, it is August. We have the hardest time between late July and August and September to keep grass in our pastures because it gets so hot and so dry here. Um, we haven't had a lot of rain in the last couple of months. And as anybody knows that has pigs, pigs do a number on the pastures. So we're hoping we've just been supplementing with some feed and uh, some produce from the garden. All right, as I said, I was gonna give you guys a garden tour now that I've fed everybody and they hopefully won't be too loud so that way I can talk. Um, so our garden is nothing really fancy. I would love to do a permanent fence around it and um, like the four board wooden fence or a picket fence, but we just did kind of what we had and what works. Um, so I'll flip you around and show you. So this is just kind of the overlook the out from looking from the outside in. Um, we have the netting that's all the way around it. That is poultry netting from Premier One. We had that back from uh, when we had sheep and we were trying to keep our sheep out of our garden space because at our old house, our garden space was inside the pasture. So we were trying to keep our sheep out of where the pasture was. So anyway, so we just reused this um, we will probably expand the area as years go on, um, depending on how long we stay at this property. But anyway, so it, I think this is the 164 foot fence and then it has you by the eight foot gate separately. So, and we've just done raised beds. Um, we've only been at this house and this property for about a year and a half. Last year we did not do any garden. We did build these beds. They're they're just regular. I think they're uh, two by twelves, and I think uh, my husband got them in eight foot lengths. Um, they're not pressure treated because pressure treated is not good for garden stuff um, because of the chemicals that they use to treat it. So, and this first bed that you're looking at right here, this is all of our tomatoes and. I guess I should back up and say that this is a late season, so we're into the first week of August. Um, if I can find some pictures, I will insert a few pictures at the end of what our garden looked like when we first planted it and kind of throughout the summer. But this is our tomato bed. Our beds are four by eight feet, 
and we have 24 tomato plants in this bed. We do the square foot gardening method. Um, so one square foot has one uh, tomato plant in it. Um, I do mostly, mostly paste or sauce tomatoes um, because that's what we like to use our tomatoes with. We have San Marzano's and Amish paste, and you could do some aromas too. I did not do any aromas this year. So, as you can see, they're indeterminate, so they just kind of keep growing, and that's why they're growing out of the cages and kind of slumped over. Um, like I said, we're in late season, so these will just keep growing and growing and growing until, I guess, the cold gets them. Um, and this next bed down here, we have corn. And I don't know if you can see in there, we have, uh, I think they're rattlesnake beans that are growing in there with them. The idea is that the beans will grow up the corn stalk as kind of their trellis. Um, we have not had good success with our corn this year. Um, this is the first time we've tried to grow it in a raised bed. And as you can see down there, we had a storm, a windstorm come through. Uh, last week and it blew some over and broke it off. I have read since then that you should probably tie it up so we'll bring some string out here and kind of tie it up to make sure that it does not continue to blow over but we have another bed over there that it was a complete fail uh, several months ago um, but you come out here because corn grow best in blocks not straight rows because they kind of self-pollinate one another as the wind blows. So we just come out here and shake the corn stalks to kind of help with pollination. As we go down the row, I'll do a little bit of a better job later. These are our black beans. I think these are black beans. So this is an entire eight... <laughs> eight by four foot bed of black beans that are on the uh, getting ready to bloom um, and then these are a bed of green beans although they don't look like they're doing all that hot um, I probably need to fertilize these so we have two beds of beans and then we have plans right here to build a compost bins um, like the three bins where you can move them over. That's coming soon, maybe this winter. And then here we had lima beans. My husband mowed over it this week. The soil quality here is not very well. And we've tried to grow stuff in, like tilling up in, in the soil. And nothing we've planted has gone very well. So we're just going to continue with the boxes. So these two boxes are new this year. And we did the four last year. But these, I know, are lima beans. They're planted with our, um, we have a row of cantaloupe in there and some watermelon that we're growing up in a trellis. So we just took a cattle panel, bent it over, and my husband needs to stake it up with some fence posts, but we'll get to that in just a few weeks. You kind of do things and then uh, as you have time, you finish the project. Um, so, like I said, the cantaloupe is growing up the trellis. It's blooming. I don't see any little cantaloupe yet. Um, but there are several, a few little baby watermelons. And what you do with the trellis is you just kind of hammock the uh, watermelon up like this. And so it kind of supports it as it grows. This is just um, some of our daughter's old stockings or uh, pantyhose that go along with their winter dresses that they've grown out of so we took that and um, cut it up and here's a here's a little one there's another one so I just try to come out here every couple of days and see if we have oh we do have another little one I need to so let's see if I can get in the shot what? oh there you are <laughs> so I will go get some pantyhose inside and I'll bring that out and tie it up Maybe I'll show that to you before I turn off this vlog today. Um, but yeah, this is our cantaloupe growing up the trellis. There's another look at our overgrown tomato plants. This is our corn bed that did not go over very well. We had 
um, on the ends we had zucchini they were already done but um, we tried to do the three sisters method and it did not work um, and the reason why it did not work is because we planted everything at the same time um, and we didn't use the right squash plants. So they say to use like the winter squash that actually vine, that that works well. Um, so we just gotta pull this up and feed the stalks to the pigs. We just haven't, haven't done that. Um, but we did find that if you are gonna do like with these, this bed over here, we gave the corn a two week head start. Then we come back and we planted the beans. And so the beans were actually able to run up the corn. Whereas here, the beans kind of overshadowed the corn and kind of they didn't do what we wanted it to do so so that's just kind of a look at what we have going on in our garden we once all of this is finished we do have plans to do kind of a fall garden and winter garden with some lettuce and carrots and maybe some garlic um but just trying to we want to be able to get to where we have something that we are growing here on the farm um, pretty much all year long and I have a peek at a few of our beehives over there we're hoping to harvest honey here in about another month we have one hive over there and then there's one kind of up the driveway sadly we lost one um, a few weeks ago to we think either heat or um, hive beetles we're not exactly sure what got that hive but we opened it up one day and there was a ton of dead bees so here's our little watermelon, and to tie it up, we're just going to bring the pantyhose, tie it here. the other side up and as it grows it will do just like the other side so that is just kind of a look at our garden and what we have going on out here it's uh, like I said it's late season it's August so a lot of stuff that we've already pulled out of here we've already harvested and um, we'll be getting it ready for a uh, winter or fall planting so if you are new here i would love for you to subscribe give us a thumbs up and uh, let me know down in the comments what you grew in your garden this summer i hope you guys are having a great day and we'll see you in the next video bye mm -hmm.